Hey everybody, welcome back to the Aquaculture channel. So today I would like to talk a little bit about what makes a trawler a trawler. So I'm sitting aboard my trawler, which is actually a 1989 44 foot DeFever offshore cruiser. So the company doesn't even call it a trawler, they call it an offshore cruiser, but I like to call it a trawler. But is it actually a trawler? I know many of you have heard the term thrown around quite a bit and you don't know exactly what it means. And I know that there's a lot of folks out there that are very adamant on what makes a trawler a trawler and what does not. So I would like to clear the air a little bit, give you my opinion, my take on what makes a trawler a trawler. So let's start with the basics. So the word trawler starts with the word trawl. A trawl is a net that you pull behind one's boat mainly for fishing practices, or it could be used for the purpose of marine research as well. So you could be pulling a plankton net behind your boat and it would be a trawler as well. Hell, you could have a sailboat and pull a net behind it and call it a trawler. I've seen it done. So that might blow some people's mind. So why do we call these recreational cruising vessels trawlers if they're not pulling nets behind them? Well, fishing trawlers were originally built to be out on the ocean for long periods of time. They had big full displacement hulls, which provided them a lot of volume and stability. They needed to hold a lot of fuel, water, provisions, fishing equipment, and of course they wanted to be able to hold as much catch as possible, be it shrimp or fish or whatever. And the vessel had to be built to withstand whatever Neptune threw at them so that the crew could stay out there in all conditions. So the goal was to be out on the water for as long as possible, to catch as much as possible, to have the highest return on investment. So as a result, you had this rugged ship-like profile and let's face it, who doesn't like seeing a trawler out on the water? So there was a handful of designers and builders that adapted the trawler style to the recreational market to appeal to the folks that wanted to either live aboard or cruise extensively on something that was comfortable, capable, safe, and still had that classic ship-like profile. And trawlers were known to go slow, but if you built something that had all of the creature comforts and safety in mind, then it wasn't so bad taking the slow lane. So these days, trawler is more of a sexy general term. That's great for marketing as well, because it's, it's awesome to be able to call a boat a trawler. I like to call my boat a trawler. And so it really comes down to what your opinion is on a trawler. Is it the physical characteristics that make it a trawler? Is it because they have that salty profile, the rounded lines, that seagoing uh, classic fishing trawler look? Is it the full displacement hull, that efficiency, that capability for being out on the water for long periods of time? I mean, really, it's any of the above and all of the above. So you can call it whatever you want to call it. And a trawler is a great catch-all term. I know some folks will say only a trawler has a full displacement hull, although you can have a semi-displacement hull and have those salty lines and a big tank capacity for fuel and water and provisions and everything and have the capability for covering long distances but also have the opportunity to use the big power plants on board to get on plane and go quick or you can back it off and cruise at trawler speed which is technically between you know somewhere between five and nine knots and Another reason those fishing trawlers go that speed, aside from having a displacement hull and you've got uh, you know the physics involved with displacement speeds, but also you're pulling a lot of gear. You're pulling a net through the water. You're not going to be tearing through the water at 25 knots with these big nets trailing behind you. So you're going to be cruising at slower speeds. So trawler speeds of that five to nine knots which is also going to be an efficient speed and you just need some uh, modest sized diesels to push you along through the water with your displacement hull and you can cruise efficiently for a long period of time. And I always love it when the Grand Banks conversation comes up because Grand Banks looks like a quintessential trawler. But there are people that will say, it's not a trawler. It doesn't have a full displacement hull. They have semi-displacement hulls. They can get on plane but it has all of the other characteristics that go along with a trawler. It has the sea keeping capability. It has the comfort. It has the tankage. It can cruise at the trawler speeds to cruise economically. So, you know, I don't think you should get so bent out of shape about if it's a trawler or not, because really a trawler is just a common name. Just like in the animal kingdom, any typical plant or animal is going to have a common name based on what it looks like. So, an animal could have a 
common name that is shared with multiple species and you don't really know exactly the species until you break it down to the genus and species for instance like elkhorn coral that's the common name but then the more specific identification of that coral is broken up with its genus which is acropora and its species name which is palmata so acropora palmata is really the specific breakdown of that type of animal so a boat could be classified in a similar manner i guess so my trawler is technically a motor vessel with a full displacement hull so the common name could be a trawler the genus is motor vessel and the species is displacement hull so that's a more specific way to call it but it's much easier to just say my boat's a trawler and it's cool to say that you have a trawler because it's synonymous with a badass rugged seagoing vessel so another word that's commonly confused with the word trawler is troller or trolling or troll so that's spelled t-r-o-l-l -L, not t-r-a-w-l -L. so a trawl is a fishing net where when you troll you're actually pulling bait through the water to catch sport fish or any other type of food fish by hook and line so most commonly are sport fish boats that are out offshore that are dragging a fishing line behind their boat to catch marlin tuna whatever and so they would be trolling while a lot of the time going trawler speed, which that adds to the confusion, of course. And furthermore, I know that there's a specific brand of boat called a trawler that looks like a trawler, but they call it a trawler. Go figure. So yes, I'm gonna call my boat a trawler because it fits the characteristics that I believe make up a trawler. So you can call it whatever you want, just don't call it a houseboat. I figured this was appropriate timing to discuss this topic since I was recently invited by JMYS trawler specialist Jeff Merrill and Mark Pittman Jr. of Jeff Merrill Yacht Sales to be a part of one of their cruising conversations episodes on the JMYS trawler specialist YouTube channel. We filmed the episode down in Stewart at this year's Trawler Fest and it is going to air on May 6th so I'm going to post a link to that video below. So of course if it's past May 6th go check out the video. If you're not already familiar with Jeff Merrill, which I'd be surprised if you're not, if you're watching this video, Jeff has an extensive and well-known history in the trawler industry. If you look up anything that involves trawlers online or in printed magazines like Passage Maker Magazine, it's hard not to come across Jeff's name. Jeff spent many years at Nordhaven Yachts and has been integral in the Trawler Fest program over the years. And he has an excellent website that I'll provide the link to down below along with his YouTube channel in which it provides a lot of great information about the trawler lifestyle, trawler skills, trawlers in general, and of course Jeff and Mark and the rest of the trawler specialists are trawler brokers. So if you're looking to buy or sell a trawler, definitely reach out to them. They're the number one people to go to in the industry. It was so great catching up up with Jeff and Mark down at Trawler Fest down in Stewart and it was an honor to be invited on their channel so definitely go check out the video and if you haven't already go subscribe to their channel you won't be disappointed. I hope this has been informative to you and you've enjoyed the content and I'm sure many of you are going to have comments galore down below which I hope you do. This is always a highly debated topic and I'm open to other opinions and additions to anything that I may have missed, anything that you believe uh, make up a characteristic of a trawler or do not, please leave a comment below. And if you are enjoying my ongoing content, which I'm hoping you are, feel free to throw a like on any of the videos that you see of mine. Make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you know when I post my next videos. Of course, follow me on Instagram. That's aqua underscore cultured. Don't forget the D on the end. And of course, you can get your aqua cultured apparel and merchandise on my website. That is aqua hyphen cultured.com. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And remember, if you're not floating, you're sinking. So stay afloat, my friends, and I'll see you out there. And I'll see you next time.